How does your favorite story end? Wait, first, how does your favorite story begin? In a world where a kid who has something to learn, something to discover, this kid finds unexpected friends. They head out on an adventure and face some tough challenges. Then when things are the darkest, when all hope seems lost, something, someone, comes through to save the day. And everyone celebrates! Now, think about this. We are hardwired to love stories because each one of us is living one. We're all human and we all make mistakes. But sometimes the road ahead can be so rough, we don't know how to fix the problems we face. But we do know the times we've seen God at work. We know he sent a hero right into the middle of our story, God's own son, Jesus. And we know that when we follow Jesus, God promised an ending more incredible than anything we can imagine. Wherever we go, he goes with us too. When we live out our story with hope and faith, others can see God at work in us. That's why faith is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. and I want to tell you about my favorite month of the year. <gasps> no, I want to 
to sing about it. I love July. You wanna know why? I love July. You wanna know why? It's because July is the month where you can play outside, eat homemade ice cream, and do all the fun summer things. But it's also when we celebrate Christmas in July. Have a holly jolly Christmas. It's the best time of the- It is the best time of the year. Some of you are probably thinking that it doesn't feel like Christmas time, and that's okay. It doesn't have to feel exactly like Christmas time to celebrate it. That's what Christmas in July is all about. It just takes a little extra faith. Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. Take Christmas presents for example. Even though we can't see what's inside, we have faith that it's something good and exciting because it's from someone who cares about us and wants us to be happy. Like this one is from my friend, Haley. Man, do I wanna see what's inside? Not a problem, just gotta focus all my senses. Or maybe I need to focus with an x-ray machine. Yeah. Okay, it's not a real x-ray machine, but it's homemade and it should do the trick. <laughs> Just one thing first. Got it! Now I can see what's inside. Hmm. It's kind of dark in here. This may take a while. Today's story is all about gifts, by the way. Actually, it's about one gift. And it's a big one. You won't want to miss it. See you soon. Maybe it's a pair of socks. Or a composition book. Those are kind of black, aren't they? Huh. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Rin grabbed a handful of granola bars from the pantry and tossed them in her duffel as Aunt Dina watched. I don't know if they'll have snacks there. Aunt Dina raised an eyebrow and took a sip of coffee. Is it one of those church camps? I guess. I, I mean, Jess invited me. It's in the mountains. It sounds cool. You're going to have to shape up, you know. You don't go to church like them. Hey, I don't get in trouble. Rin's aunt grinned and shook her head. <laughs> Whatever you say, hun. Rin's mom breezed in with a rain poncho and handed it to Rin. Come on, Dina. Rin's a good kid, and she's going to have a great time. There's Jess. You go and have fun. It was a three hour trip up to Camp Pickery. Jess and her mom chattered away, but Rin couldn't help thinking about Aunt Tina's offhanded comment. I do mess up a lot. Images scrolled through Rin's head like scenes from a film. The times Rin snapped at her little brother. Go away, Keegan, you're such a pain. That time last week when mom shut off Rin's internet access. That is so not fair. And Rin snuck the password off of her mom's phone. And that exam where she accidentally saw the answer off of her friend's test and wrote it down anyway? I shouldn't have done that. Hey, Rin, we're almost there. Jess's cheerful voice cut into Rin's thoughts. She tried to smile as she looked out out the window at the winding mountain road and high blue sky. Great! Rin's worries haunted her as they checked in and made their way to the cabin. These kids all go to church. They know the right stuff to say and do. Rin glanced over to see Jess struggling with her oversized duffel and backpack. She decided it was time to level up. Hey, let me get that for you. But you've got... I can do it. Rin staggered toward the cabin, hauling both of their bags. Inside, they met their counselor, Sally. Hey there, I think this is all of us now. I'm really sorry, but the bottom bunk by the door is kind of creaky. We usually draw straws to see who will sleep there. I'll take it. What? Oh, well... That's great. At dinner, Rin looked out for more ways she could blot out the memories of her mistakes. They ran out of cherry cobbler. Here, you can have mine. When Sally spilled her water. Oops, I'll just. I got it. I'll run over to the kitchen and get a towel. 
After dinner, everyone hiked the half mile toward the outdoor amphitheater for the evening gathering. Rin's eyes darted back and forth, looking for more ways to help. Hey, you can slow your roll now. Sally fell into step with Rin, who grinned sheepishly. This is all kind of new for me. <laughs> me too. It's my first year as a counselor. It's just, everyone here has gone to church forever. They've got it all together. <laughs> Trust me, they don't. I don't. But at least they know the rules, the right stuff to do. Rin, you have been incredibly helpful and kind since you got here, which is awesome. But you don't have to do everything perfectly to fit in. At camp? Yeah, at camp, but also with God. That's what this week is about. Having fun and relaxing, knowing that it doesn't matter who you are or what you've done. God totally loves and accepts you anyway. Rin frowned as she hopped over a fallen log across the trail. I lied to my mom last week. Well, own up to it. She'll still love you, and it sure won't change how God feels about you. <laughs> Not to be all churchy, but can I tell you this verse I love? Sure. It's the first thing I read when my friend Carl gave me a Bible three years ago. God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. Your salvation doesn't come from anything you do. It is God's gift. It is not based on anything you have done. No one can brag about earning it. Christ, that means Jesus, right? Yeah, we'll talk about all that this week, but just know you can't work for God's love. He already loves you completely. Whether or not you lie to your mom or take the creaky bunk or give away your dessert. It just feels like, I don't know, I should have to do something. I know, right? But just letting God love you, that's the most important thing. Doing good stuff comes after knowing how loved you are. Rin took a deep breath trying to take it all in. As the dust began to settle, she saw a large campfire ahead with rows of benches. Jess waved. Hey Rin, we saved you a seat. Rin turned back to Sally. Do you have a place to sit? Go ahead, I'll see you for s'mores after. Rin jogged over to the bench where Jess and the other girls from the cabin were sitting. It was a lot to process, but for the first time all day, she felt like she could relax because she knew there was nothing she had to do to fit in. I just can't see it. Can, can you see it? No. Well, you know what I can see? I can see the amazing gift God gave to us. Not something we earned, or worked for, <laughs> but a gift God had planned since the very beginning. See, when Adam and Eve first turned away from God, sin entered the world and people's relationship with God was broken. And people were waiting on God to send a savior. And that's exactly what he did. He sent Jesus to die on the cross to pay for the price of our sins. Jesus was God's gift to the world. So it's easy to think of things we can hold and unwrap as gifts, but this gift from God is so much bigger than anything that could fit inside a box. You'd need a really big box. Bigger, 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 bigger. It doesn't matter if you found the biggest box on the planet, it still wouldn't be big enough. That's because there's no limit to God's grace. He loves you more than you can imagine. There's nothing you could do that would make him love you any more or any less. He sent Jesus so that we could have a relationship with him that will last forever. So the one thing to remember today is this. Jesus is a gift for everyone. When we believe that, it helps us do good things and love others, not because we're trying to earn God's love, but because we already know how much he loves us. And if you're not sure what you believe about God yet, guess what? God loves you so much, whether you realize it or not. It's like God is giving you a Christmas gift. All you gotta do is unwrap it. <laughs> That's the only way to really know what's inside. I'm going to the movies. 
Merry Christmas, everybody.